How's it going guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. First and foremost, it is ridiculously hot outside right now. I think it's clocking in, let's see, at uh, 101 degrees. Yeah, it's warm. Um, feels harder than that to me. Whatever. Anywho, so today uh, I was looking at the comments for my last video. I don't know if you saw the last video. You should watch it if you haven't. But I was asking if you guys wanted specific videos on any fitness topics to post them in the comments. Someone asked how to grow their chest specifically. Great question. Uh, actually growing any muscle really kind of falls under the same guidelines. I mean, if you get really deep into it, like fast twitch muscle fibers versus slow twitch or type one, type two. Um, fast twitch are more explosive in power. Uh, slow twitch is more like cardio or long endurance muscles. So there's some research out there that the slow twitch muscle should be trained with more repetitions because they take longer to fatigue, but for chest, for instance, um, honestly, it's about progressive overload. So the pr principle of progressive overload, which you can really apply to anywhere, even if you argue fast twitch, slow twitch, it's still about making it harder as time goes on. So I've talked about this before, but let's say your chest workout right now is three sets of 10 push-ups, just easy numbers to work with. So you're doing 30 push-ups every other day. And that's what you keep doing. Your body isn't necessarily going to get stronger if you only do three sets of 30 push-ups because that's what you've trained it to do. You get really efficient at those three sets of 30, but then it needs another stimulus, something more challenging to make it basically make more muscle for that task. Um, there's some neuromuscular changes that go on first before muscles get bigger, um, which is known as hypertrophy when muscles actually increase in size. Um, your brain basically helps your muscles get more efficient at that task. So more um, muscle fibers and motor units are recruited to help you. So it's like if there's 10 friends and you're like, hey, can you come over and help me move this couch? And only two of you end up moving the couch and the other are just watching TV. They're all there, but not everyone's chipping in. But then let's say, you know, you've asked them multiple times over and over, like, guys, we really need help moving all this furniture. And they're like, fine, we'll help. And then the other eight people come and help. That's like the neuromuscular connection. I hope that analogy helps. So the muscles are already there for the task, but they're not working together or in harmony. And then as you continue to train, they start working together. So that typically takes place in the first few weeks to months of training where you're not getting bigger, but you're still getting stronger. Neuromuscular changes are happening. More recruitment is going on with the muscles you already possess at their current size. Then you keep training and then your body's like, yo, this is heavy, even with all 10 of us helping lift the couch we need to make the muscles bigger, assuming your protein and nutrition is on point. Um, then your body's like, cool, let's make hypertrophy take place. So those three sets of 10 push-ups, it's not enough necessarily after a while to get your body to want to create more muscle. Uh, muscle costs a lot of energy on your body to exist. So your body's not really down to put it there unless you prove to it in a sense that you need the muscle your body doesn't know if you need it for survival or just because you want to have big muscles walking down the beach or whatever. So you gotta do it consistently enough with enough rest in between so it can recover from the workouts. But the principle of progressive overload, as I was saying earlier, the three sets of 10 push-ups, you gotta make it harder. So maybe that means four sets of 10 push-ups. So you're increasing the amount, or maybe it's three sets of 11 push-ups, or perhaps you decide to make it heavier, like you just increase the weight, not necessarily the volume of how many sets or reps. So you have like a plate on your back for a you know, 20 pound plate or whatever. So now you're doing three sets of 10, but loaded with weight or a weight vest. That all falls under the principle of progressive overload. Or maybe you were doing your three sets of 10 pushups, one set in the morning, one at lunch, one in the evening, but now you're gonna do all three sets in the same 10 minute workout or same hour. So now you're decreasing the amount of rest you get between sets, which is also another way to progressively overload and increase the difficulty. So with chess, it's, I know there's like a million machines at the gym and everyone's like, well, yeah, you gotta do incline bench and then uh, decline bench or incline bench, decline bench and then normal bench and the fly machine. And then you gotta do those things with the cables. And then you gotta also do pushups. You do not need to do every single machine that exists in the gym, especially every single workout. For me, I'm doing a push-pull leg split. That's what's developed this right now. I don't know what physique you're looking for. I mean, of course you can get bigger than this, but I'm not trying to get massive, massive because I also have acrobatic goals and there's only so much time in a day to train. And anytime I train doing this, is less time doing handstands. So <laughs> I mix it up. But I do push-pull leg split. You want at least 
Again, this is generalized advice. The more advanced you get, you can tweak it more. Uh, at least a day off between training the same muscle group. So when I do push, pull, leg, I don't come back to push, you know, until I get through pull and leg and then it's push again. So I actually get more than just a day off between working pushing muscles. Chest is a pushing muscle, you know, so like it pushes the weight away. So that's how I split it. So I do pushing things like chest or, you know, shoulders or tricep pushing away. Um, deltoids, you can kind of throw it in either camp. So I do front delts on my push day, side delts on my push day, and then I do pull day, which is biceps, um, you know, like back rowing and pull-ups and, you know, uh, post delts. That's all my pull day. Um, abs kind of fall in usually on pull day. Uh, and then I do leg day, which is all, all the legs, the front and the back. I just have a separate day for that. Um, so yeah, for chest, again, principal progressive overload. You can get a strong chest just from push-ups. You really can, and even grow the muscles if you progressively overload. You can do it from bench press. You can do it from incline, decline. Depending on what style though, will train the fibers a little different. So your pectoralis major, um, you know, this guy that everyone's like, I want big chest, uh, attaches basically to your humerus, um, also to your sternum and your clavicle and a little bit down here, um, there's different attachment points. So if you only do the same exercise all the time, you can argue that just bench you know, just doing a flat bench won't hit the posterior fibers as much or the um, superior fibers as much. I mean, inferior, not posterior. Inferior or superior fibers as much versus just staying in the same plane. So there is something to be said about mixing it up every once in a while. So you can hit those other fibers a little more direct. But basically, anytime I put my chest or my arm um, into horizontal adduction or adduction, I'm engaging my chest. So push-ups, even though it's like a forward and back, you bring your arms closer to center. So you're engaging this, basically when you bring an attachment point, close origin and insertion points together, you're engaging that muscle. There's also research out there saying that the bigger range of motion you go through, the more hypertrophic gains you can get for that exercise. So like easier to kind of visualize bicep. So again, if I only do bicep curls to here, I'm not going through that full range of motion, right? All the way to the top, squeezing at the top, bringing it down. Same with chest. If I only do like little chest push-ups, I'm not actually bringing my arms back to get that stretch in the pecs and then going through full, um, you know, concentric and eccentric motion, I may be robbing myself of the gains that I could get quicker. There's a time and a place again for half reps, whatever, going beyond the scope of this particular video, but you want to try to progressively overload and try to go through a full range of motion. But of course, you're usually weaker if you go too far back. So you don't want to do a heavy, heavy load all the way back here without a spotter or anything and then try to get it all the way through. So, you know, be in a position where you can move the weight safely, have a spotter if you are doing bench presses, uh, but you can totally do push-ups. You know, you can again, increase the difficulty. If you don't have weights at home to do it, you can put your feet up on something to make like a 45 degree angle. So there's more of your body weight on top of your chest to increase the difficulty. Uh, again, like I mentioned, you could put weights on your back. You can do slower push-ups. So there's something known as the one minute push-up challenge. Literally you do one push-up, but you try to take a minute. So literally 30 seconds on the way down, like one, two, you know, so on and so forth, let's say 30 seconds. And without dropping, then I take 30 seconds to get back up. Again, that's another kind of challenge. So you can mix it up to make it more challenging as long as you do progressive overload. Now, not every single workout needs to progressively overload, nor should it. You need rest as well, like I mentioned. So when I do my push-pull leg split, I basically do a heavy day push. Let's say pull is now a light or moderate day, and then leg is heavy again. And then the next push day would be heavy, or, or I mean light, sorry. So I, I follow like, basically I hit chest heavy one dime a week and moderate to light another day a week. Same for pulling muscle, same for legs. So I'm not heavy, 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 six days in a row. It's too much for your central nervous system. You're gonna burn out if you do that for long term. You do it in short intervals, but I would not recommend you constantly give 110% effort every single workout because you're gonna hurt yourself. And then you're gonna burn out and not have energy for other things as well. Uh, I used to do that all the time and I was always fatigued. So now I give myself grace and I don't go crazy hard every single day in a row. Again, that's not the only way to work out, but again, so basically recap to grow your chest, principle of progressive overload, try to go through a full range of motion. You can mix and match exercises, but it's more about keeping it from getting dull or stale versus you have to. You don't need to do 50 types of push-ups, 50 types of chest machines. 
pick a couple you like, aim roughly, you know, I do, let's see, like on my heavy day, again, heavy doesn't necessarily mean heavy weight, but heavy amount of effort. I tend to do like five to eight sets for that muscle group. So on my heavy chest day, maybe three to five of them will be traditional bench press. And then another three, if I hit towards eight, maybe, you know, with the, um, the cables, you know, going across, cause I feel like I can get a deeper range of motion. So I don't just stop here. Sometimes I'll cross my hands so I can contract and really squeeze at the end. And then the next one, I'll put the other hand on top to squeeze. And then another day I may do incline bench for five. And then I may do, um, you know, like decline bench, or I may do push-ups to failure for another. Your body can't count. It can only feel. It doesn't know if you're doing something with heavy, crazy weight 50 times or 10 times. It just knows fatigue or lack thereof. So going towards muscle failure or task failure as you train will help you get stronger. So again, if you do three sets of 10 push-ups, but 10 is easy, you got to make it harder somehow, either slower, faster, less rest between more weight, more sets, more reps, something. Hope that makes sense. Great question. Uh, it was fun to really talk about this a little more in depth. Hope you guys liked the video. Please share it, comment below what other videos you want me to talk about or topics about fitness. Let the games begin. <laughs>